What's up, homie? In today's video, I'm going to show you the settings that I personally use when I digitize using Welcome. These settings have helped me create some amazing designs. So hopefully, these settings help you and help you improve your workflow when digitizing. All right. So the first thing we're going to do when we're setting up our Welcome software is we're going to change our thread chart. So we're going to click on threads. We're going to go to select thread charts. We're going to remove whatever we have pre-selected. I'm going to, you're going to look for the thread chart that you, the brand of, of the brand that you use for me is going to be Madeira Polyneon 40. So I'm going to find it. I'm going to click the arrow to the side to add it. I'm going to click OK. Um, I'm going to basically what I do is you basically any of these numbers are thread colors. And these are like when we're digitizing these basically let, let's see. So let's say we have a, sh we have, we digitize, um, an object and we want to change the color. Basically what we do, we would click those colors. So what I do when I'm setting up welcome is I, I have a 16 needle machine. Some people have a single needle machine. So when you have a 16 needle machine, it's way easier. Um, but basically I, for let's say number one, number two on my machine, I just look at all the numbers and I manually add them of the colors that I use on my machine. Um, you could add up to 30 before it adds a new column. See, like right here, 31. So I added a column, but I usually try to stick with like 16 but you go up to 30 would be good anything other than that you're gonna have to keep clicking the down button and up button to get around but that's still fine um what i personally do is i i use the c colors on my machine and anything additional i basically use the colors that i use the most so mostly black white red blue yellow um and anything else that you are going to use i recommend you add it to your chart and then we're going to save it so every time that when you load the software it's already there and you don't have to waste time adding them changing them um it makes digitizing process way faster okay the second thing that we're going to do is we're, we're going to turn off auto underlay the reason why is if we make a design let's say okay this one is a satin stitch right so if we have an underlay and it auto selects it for us, like let's say for this one zigzag, or it could be uh, edge run, tatami, or anything as an underlay. If we don't need it, we're just gonna be wasting um our time adding extra stitches that we're not gonna need. So like let's say if this was a tatami stitch, sometimes, well it's not pre-selected, but if it was pre-selected, it would be zigzag, right? But most of the time we don't we wouldn't want a zigzag or an edge run uh most of the time the tommy is just basically just a the tommy underlay and if we have auto underlay it's going to pre-select it so i always turn it off and on all my tommy stitches i manually just put the the tommy stitch to not be wasting time adding auto underlays um i manually select them all right, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off a setting that is selected for us already when we first op um, are setting up our software is this setting stitch has a uh, auto split and auto spacing turned on. So auto split creates these um, ugly like synced in stitches. So when you're in border, that's going to show up. I click auto split to turn that off. So now it's a more a solid object and I also turn off auto spacing. The reason I turn off auto spacing is uh, 0.38 is the default, um, but I personally like to work with 0 0.5 and I click save, make sure that saves as uh, my default template and I'm going to click this. I'm going to delete it. And another thing I'm not sure if you notice, but when I was working and digitizing and showing you guys the settings, did you see that this like object list and object properties kept disappearing? What I personally like to do is turn off the auto hide feature. This is like 
super important because otherwise you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth. But unless you like to have it hidden, um, you could just click on it on the sides. But personally, me, I like to turn off auto hide for the object list and the object properties. That way I have my object properties right here. So I could just go and click an object, turn off and change any settings that I want. And it makes for me, it makes it way easier to have it visible and already out because I don't need the whole I, I don't need the whole workspace to be visible. And plus, I could always just like move it and make it smaller if I want to make the workplace bigger for myself. OK, so I'm going to right click on the fill and I'm going to make sure I turn off auto split auto spacing and I'm going to change this to 0 0.05. That's my preferred one. So I'm going to click save. So I'm going to save it as the default template. So when I open up a new design or yeah, when I open up a new design, it's already like my settings are already saved. They're ready to go. So I'm ready to digitize and we could go straight at it. Okay. So for the fourth thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to change our, let's say we're going to change our run stitch value so the length i personally like to use two minimum length one and the quarter gap 0 0.05 um i i use these settings because it makes the stitch the points more consistent and um watch so sometimes when we make a design if it's not consistent this will happen so we drew an outline and it it's not on our outline. So let's say, we, uh, let's turn it on variable run length. It's on it, but certain settings, uh, depending on your length, your minimum length and your quarter gap, sometimes you'll mess with it depending on the type of design that you're working on. And if it's too low or too high, it might not cover all the, all the spots or it might do too many points. So this, is the settings that I use two, one, and 0 0.05. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys one of the reasons why the stitch values length matters a lot. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna click it and I'm gonna show you watch. If you have it too low, the lower that it is, the more points that it will make. And the higher that it is, the less points it will have. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this to two, one and 0 0.05. And that's what I'm going to leave it as. If you want to change it and you want to mess with it, if you, if you like, let's say you're making a design, let's say a circle and you want more points, feel free to lower it. If you want more points, 0 0.05, we'll have more points. I mean, if, once you start messing with it, it's if you want to be create, create a more creative design or if you need more points, less points, feel free to mess with it. So now we're just going to right click on our outline. I mean, right click on our, our digitized run. Two. One and point zero five and I'm going to click save. So it's saved on our template okay so the fifth thing that we're going to do is we're going to click escape go to connectors we're going to change it to run save it and i'm um, the reason i do i change it to run instead of jump is because i want to be able to manually select when i want it to jump otherwise i'm gonna have so many unnecessary jumps when i don't need it so i'm gonna show you guys uh, let's say i'm doing a run stitch it starts right here it's gonna end right here if I was going to do it, let's say if I was working on my outlines and I was running to my outline. And then let's see, where did it end? Okay, ended right here. So if I were going to do a run and then I was going to do a column. Uh, jump isn't necessary. So this could have just been a run, a run stitch. And this would have automatically continued. But if I were to have a jump. It would add a jump to my design that is not needed and jumps and trims are going to be added, which I don't need sometimes. So, but let's say if it, a jump were needed, 
how would I know if I have it saved as a run? All of my objects are going to be run. So let's say this was far. Oh, wait. Look. The column. Okay. So if this was far, I would know that I would need to change it to a jump. And I would I would manually change it. And it would save me time because I'm, it's gonna, I'm going to know I need to do a jump. Because it's going to show me a visual of it. All right, so on to our official configurations of the options. Auto save, you could change this to basically save however minutes from when you're working on a design. I personally do five minutes because I usually get scared like if my machine would restart or all of a sudden start to update or if I lose power. Um, save me five minutes of work. So let's say you're working on a design and you have auto save the feature on it's automatically saving you every five minutes so if anything were to happen your your progress would be saved um it also we welcome also has like let's say if your computer were to turn off and you turn it on and you're working on a design most of the time it has to always create a backup copy so sometimes you're going to be able to recover part of your process our next thing that we're going to do is show values i'm going to change it to absolute because i want it to be exact um close to join i'm gonna turn that off play button sounds i'm gonna get rid of that because um i think that's really annoying everything else i'm gonna keep the same i'm gonna go to view design true view i'm gonna change the thread thickness thread thickness from normal i'm gonna change the thread I'm going to change the thread thickness from thick to normal. I'm going to change the light source to above. And that's going to give me a better view of the thread. So it doesn't give me like a fake illusion of how it would look. And I prefer this because I get a better view of how my outlines are going to look. And how everything else is going to look. Because if you change it to thick, the stitches are going to look too thick. Um, you can mess with it, but personally, I highly recommend normal and above. I'm going to click OK. All right, so don't forget to click on the Save button. Default template, object properties, OK, and OK. Now, when you create a new design, all your settings that we just did are going to be saved. No auto underlay. And um, our save, our closest joint being off. Also, another thing that I highly recommend you learn to do is to learn the features. I'm going to do a video next on some of my favorite features that Welcome has. For example, I'm going to show you guys one on this video. If I'm working on my object list and I import an image, well, I'm going to just act like this was an image. If I don't want this to change at all, or I don't want it to be able to move or I don't want it to be able to be del deletable. You could just click K, which will lock it. And then nothing could be done to it. It won't move. You can't change the thread color. Um, but yeah, you could also hit shift K to unlock it. And you could also right click and click lock. That's something that I use pretty often. I'm going to do a video. My next video will most likely be the features that I personally use and that you could use. That concludes today's video. I'm going to be posting more videos of welcome tutorials. Um, I'm going to teach you guys the basics. I'm going to show you how to make some designs. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to click that like button. Comment anything that you want to learn or know. And I'll try my best to get back to you. Bye.